The Celtics had their chances. They had another terrible third quarter. And yes, I'm going to talk about that foul call. It's all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. There, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Where does your team every day? I got you covered every single day, Monday through Friday, plus bonus podcasts on weekends when they play. More podcasting you're going to find anywhere, free, fresh, delivered directly to your device when you subscribe. So open that up, click subscribe on your favorite podcasting app, however you found this show, and boom. There you go. You're part of the crew. You can do the same on YouTube. Maybe you're watching on YouTube. Hop into the comment section. Let me know what you think about what I'm saying. This Celtics lost to the Indiana Pacers, which very easily could have been a win. Let me know what you think. I'm John Corrales. I used to play a long time ago. Now I am covering the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. All right. Today's show uh, is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. You can make every moment more. Right now, you new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning, with any, any $5 money line bet, any $5 bet at all. $150. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna go backwards today because I'm I'll talk about Jalen Brown later. I'll talk about that third quarter later, the Tyrese Halliburton injury, which kind of fueled that third quarter. Um, Jalen was awesome. Going to get to him for sure. The bench, the I think when the Celtics were shorthanded with no, no Jason Tatum, no Sam Hauser, that kind of put the bench at a, a big disadvantage, and they really did not come through at all scoring-wise. All of that stuff is later. I'm going to start with the big thing at the very end here, at the very beginning, because it's what Jalen Brown was talking about after the game. Joe Mazzula was very adamant after the game, talking about, I can't wait till four o'clock tomorrow, which is when the last two minute report comes out. Jalen Brown saying, I'm pissed, uh, talking about the foul call. Okay. So let me start with this for all of the people who are hate watching, maybe some Pacers fans maybe fans of other teams who just love to come in and just gloat whenever the Celtics lose. The Celtics did not lose this game because of the foul call, all right? This is not about, oh, this cost them the game. It did not cost them the game. They had opportunities to win this game by playing a better third quarter. If And this is for Celtics fans too, by the way, right? I'm, I'm going to spend this whole first segment talking about the foul. But let's be clear. The foul, the way it was interpreted, and Jalen Brown not getting the free throws, did not cost Boston the game. There were 3.2 seconds left. Even if they had called it and Jalen Brown got the two free throws, there's no guarantee that Jalen makes both free throws. Not only because of the way Jalen Brown has shot free throws. He's not the most reliable three-point shooter. Also, the Celtics missed nine free throws in this game. Another reason why this foul was not the reason why they lost. Okay? So, Jalen still had to make two free throws. The Pacers still had an opportunity with three-plus seconds to get the ball up the floor and take a three-pointer, which... Considering how they shot in the second half, them making a three-pointer, even if Jalen had made those two free throws, them making a three-pointer was not out of the realm of possibility. Them finding a way to tie the game, them drawing a foul to find a way to tie or win the game, not out of the realm of possibility. So let's everybody listening, 
Celtics haters, Celtics lovers, let's understand this. The foul, the way it was interpreted, did not cost Boston the game because there was more to play. And also, there were other spots, the third quarter, which I'll get to, a lot of other spots where they could have won, make a couple of free throws. If they shoot 80% from the line like they normally do, their season average, that's two free throws that they would have made in a two-point loss. So, okay, that's all established now, right? It's all established. We're all on the same page. The Celtics were right to be pissed off about that call. That call was misinterpreted, in my opinion. That foul call should have been an actual foul on Buddy Heald. The notion, now Jalen says that he talked to the ref, and um, that's, uh, what's the ref's name? Uh, James Williams, the crew chief. And he said that the ref told him he didn't get hit in the head. Well, he obviously did get hit in the head, right? That's obvious. You can look at that replay and say that's obvious. The shot was not blocked. The shot, the uh, Buddy Heald got his hand on the ball, and then the hand comes off the ball, and the arm, either simultaneously or just after he touches the ball, hits Jalen Brown in the head. All the while, Jalen Brown controlled the ball. And this is where I have the issue here. And this is why the last two-minute report will be interesting and why the Celtics have a point. The rule is, as I understand it, if you block a shot first, okay, Jalen goes up for the shot, Buddy Heald blocks it, which means he dislodges it. Jalen Brown loses control. And then the follow through is incidental contact. That's a that's not a foul, right? It just goes down as a block shot. But when you touch the ball, the player re- retains control, continues to control the ball, and then you have contact, and then the player is shooting. That's a foul. Jalen Brown maintained control of the ball throughout the entirety of that play. So the referee's interpretation that the ball was touched first is incorrect because it doesn't apply when the ball continues to be controlled by the offensive player. That is my understanding of the rule. The ball was not dislodged. The ball was not blocked. You can touch the ball first, but if the player continues to control it, then it's not it doesn't negate the contact that comes afterwards. It's kind of like an equivalent of the football rule where the ball can touch the ground on a catch if the player is controlling the ball throughout the entirety of the play. Like it's okay if the the, the ball touches the ground if you control it, if the ball doesn't move. Same sort of concept here. So I understand how a ref would say, well, he touched the ball first, and so the contact that comes afterwards is, you know, that's incidental. But that's the wrong interpretation. That, to me, my understanding of the rule, that is the wrong interpretation. That is a mistake that has was made. Now, the Celtics have no recourse. They, they're they not going to, I mean, they could file an appeal, but they're not going to replay this game. They're not going to try to um, replay this. They're not going to try to put three seconds on the clock and have Jalen Brown shoot free throws on an off day where both teams are around Indy. Like, that. this is it. This is a loss. The Celtics are 28-8, and eight, and they've got to move on. Maybe there's some satisfaction in them being right. They can take that. Sure, fine. But there is no recourse for them. This is it. The Celtics are right to be upset about this call. This was an incorrect interpretation of the rule. Now, the only thing that can happen is some level of discipline for James Williams, which may be like, this is a strike against you and you don't get to uh, ref in the playoffs. That That's a possibility, but that's, that's about it. That's the only possibility that I can think of. Uh, other than that, I think we've just got to sit there and, 
if the last two minute report comes back and says, yeah, Celtics, you were right. Congratulations. You were right about this. I think they're right. I do think they're right. And I do think Jalen Brown has a right to be upset. I do think Joe Mazzula has a right to be upset. And I think fans have a right to be upset because that could have won them the game. Now I'll get into this third quarter. What I usually say at this point is they, when a game is this close, you have plenty of opportunities to win the game somewhere else. You should never let it come down to a referee's call. It still applies. I'm going to talk about that third quarter in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by BetterHelp. I know therapy is beneficial. I've gone through therapy myself, and I have found it to to help uh, improve my life. Now, whether you need to talk through some stressful moment, maybe you need to find something uh, a little more deeper uh, that you want to work through, whatever it is, find a good therapist and, and work your way through it. You're going to, you're going to be better for it. Finding a good therapist is difficult. And that's why better help is here because you don't have to go driving around to find whoever is close to you. You go to betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA. That's H E L P betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA. You fill out a questionnaire, you get matched with a licensed therapist. And then from there you can switch if you need to. So it's entirely online. This is designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. The most important thing is if the therapist that you're matched with, you don't vibe, that you can switch. You don't have to drive around. You don't have to go searching around. It's very, very convenient for you. Betterhelp.com slash LockedOnNBA. You get 10% off your first month on top of all of this convenience. Designed to do to work with your life, with your schedule, better help H E L P.com slash locked on NBA. Thank you for making locked on Celtics. Your first listen every day, go check out locked on sports today. The first ever 24 seven national sports streaming channel on YouTube. Forget about those debate shows. Forget about all that other stuff. Watch Locked On Sports today for in-depth analysis, real conversation, not contrived arguing. It's the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Go check it. So the end of the game, the the foul on Porzingis is is fine. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get too crazy about like oh you call it at that point of the game that like that's fine. I don't mind that they called it at that point in the game. Whatever. Um, if you get to that point. If you need a referee's call to go the right way, there's always a chance that this could have been won somewhere else. And I do agree. I do agree with the people who are saying, hey, John, every team makes a run. The Pacers made their run. The Celtics answered it. They deserve the, the opportunity to close this game out. And that's true. That's fine. I'm not saying that the referee's call was insignificant. It was significant, but the Celtics still could have lost. And and more than that, after Tyrese Halliburton went down in the second quarter, which I hope that that's, it really is just a hamstring strain and it's a, a couple weeks or three or four weeks at most. I hope it's not as significant as it looks, um, but we'll have to wait and see. So he goes down in the second quarter. He gets carried off. It doesn't look great. The Celtics and the Pacers in the first half have been playing this back and forth, rocky style. I throw a haymaker. You throw a haymaker. Both teams shooting around 50%. Both teams really just going at one another. It was an amazing first half. I loved it. Now, Halliburton goes down. The Celtics make a run in the midst of all of that. They take a lead. The lead got up to, I think, as much as 11. Uh, the, it settled at nine heading into halftime, and it looked like the Celtics were about to take control. And maybe the Celtics thought that they were about to take control because that's they came out in the third quarter, and they weren't matching the speed, the urgency that the Pacers were playing with. T.J. McConnell changed this game. T.J. McConnell won this game for the Pacers. I know that. Ben Matherin was the hot shooter and, and he hit a bunch of shots, but 
and and he certainly is 1A when it comes to winning this game for the Pacers. But really, honestly, uh, TJ McConnell's third quarter was the difference maker. The Celtics didn't match not only his production, 13 points in, uh, not 13 points, uh, eight points in that third quarter, plus 13 in the third quarter. They didn't match his energy. They didn't match his uh, hustle, any of that. They didn't match him at all. He set the tone for the Pacers in that in that um, third quarter, and the Celtics just didn't have it. They didn't. They they turned the ball over a bunch in the third, and it, it cost them. That that's where this game was lost. Now I I can sit there and be like. Hey, no problem that the Celtics gave up a uh, twenty-one to ten run in the third quarter. That that's fine. All right. Honestly, if the Celtics had just said at that point after twenty-one ten, gotten a stop, and then played the third quarter even, then fine. But the Celtics didn't. They the twenty-one to ten run turned into a forty-four to 33 overall third quarter. They gave up 44 points. Now, I know the Pacers score a lot of points, and the Celtics were shorthanded. But still, 44 points. Defensively, the Celtics, for all of the great defense that they played in the, in the first game against uh, the Pacers, this was less than less than stellar. Their, um, they gave up that 44-point quarter. They gave up quarters of 33 26, 44, and 30. So 25 is your, like, you want it to be 25 or less. And and Joe said after the game, like, look, they we we didn't give up a single 25-point quarter. That one quarter that was in the second quarter was 26. In the third quarter, they, they give up the 11-point quarter, and that's the difference in the game. They were up nine heading into halftime. They lost the third quarter by 11. The fourth quarter was even. So if the Celtics had just found a way to, and, and I think part of this is on Missoula because I think maybe he's stuck with the double big. Uh, maybe he should have gone with, maybe Horford should have sat for a little bit and you should have gone with Brissett uh, a little bit more, get, get another energy guy in there a smaller guy, uh, a wing to, to get out there and defend. Maybe they, they could have gone a little bit of a different route at the beginning and gone, gone to Horford, you know, in the fourth quarter, obviously. But I think in that stretch, it was obvious that McConnell was the driver and the Celtics didn't have a guy out there that could match it. Maybe they could have gone to Pritchard Earlier, they could have. I think Pritchard and Brissett would have been a good kind of answer to that, because it was obvious that the the Pacers were playing at a different speed. They were in fifth gear. The Celtics were kind of stuck in third, and they could not they could not get a single stop. It felt like in the third quarter, the Pacers shot fifteen of twenty two, four of seven from three in the third quarter, and they got to the line ten times. Boston shot 12 of 21, four of eight. They shot well. They they shot overall. The Celtics, this is a game where the, the Celtics normally win. They shot 48.6% from three. Now, Missoula might sit there and be like, we shot almost 49% from three. Why didn't we shoot more threes? They shot 35 of them. He'll probably sit there and be like, we should have shot 53 pointers on a game like this. You know, which may not be wrong in some senses because look they they took one less shot than the Pacers they shot 47 of 90 the Pacers made they took one more they made one more but they made two more three pointers the Celtics so that's plus 6 the Celtics were plus 2 at the line and there's got to be a, a two pointer in there somewhere the Celtics you know, had chances. They shot well. They turned it over 15 times for 20 points, but they forced 13 turnovers for 20 points. So that was even. Second chance points was 
kind of even. The the um, points in the paint were were Boston by eight. Uh, the bench the bench scoring is is really the the, the huge kind of difference in this game. The the benches, Boston's bench scored 27. The Pacers bench scored 75, 75 points in off the bench. And that had something to do with Halliburton, but like also this, that, that was Matherin. That was McConnell. That was healed. That was, that was everybody. Um, they just got a bunch of great performances off the bench. Celtics shorthanded, so it stands to reason that they got less than what they would normally get off the bench. But that's that's the difference in this game. That third quarter, the bench scoring, the Celtics had their chances. Jalen Brown was awesome. Jalen, let's talk a little bit about Jalen Brown uh, when I come back. Today's show brought to you by FanDuel, our good friends at FanDuel. They are America's number one sports book and they're giving you, new customer, 150 bucks in bonus bets. All you have to do is place one single $5 bet. Just place it. Doesn't matter if you win or lose. You get $150 in bonus bets. So check it out. Now's the time to go check out FanDuel. Just cruise through the app. Very easy to navigate. You can have fun with some live same game parlays, which means you can. Take you could have taken Jalen Brown's points and Kristaps Porzingis assists. Probably take the over on both of those. You stack those up. You can make yourself a little bit of extra money. You can find a parlay in the Parlay Hub, which is the best way to find popular parlays. Uh, find bets in the new Explore tab. Not sure what you want to bet on? Open up that Explore tab. Maybe you can find something that you like. Plenty of more there. Fanduel.com/slash locked on. Make your first bet a layup at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL. The best part about FanDuel is they have tools where you can protect yourself. Set your limits. Set your parameters. Go ahead. Let them know what you're willing to do, what works comfortably for your budget. And then you go ahead and have some fun because you're gambling responsibly. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Check out Locked On NBA. Locked on NBA all week long, rotating hosts. I got the Wednesday show with Jake Madison, and I'm actually going to do the Wednesday show this week. I had a couple of weeks because the Celtics were playing. Now I'm back, and that's going to be a fun show tomorrow on the Locked on NBA podcast. Go check it out wherever you found this podcast. I kind of feel bad that it's taken me this long to talk about Jalen Brown, but he had an amazing game. I mean, he he played, I would say, most of this game almost perfectly. Jalen was awesome in the first quarter, especially the first half. I, I couldn't gush about him enough. Well, I was tweeting about it. I was writing about it on a Boston sports journal. It, it should, this should have been the Jalen Brown kind of like appreciation podcast instead of everything that it became. But Jalen was, I mean, spectacular all the way around. He did have five turnovers, right? Okay. Um, two of those were live ball, two steals out of those. One of them was a, I think one of them was an offensive foul. One was a travel. One was a three seconds. One pass, one pass flew out about something like that. Um, and that's important. That's important, you know, because at least the pass out of bounds or the three second call, that kind of stuff. It's a dead ball. They blow the whistle. They, you know, give the ball to the other team. Yes. But you get to go back and set your defense. So it's not great, but it's not the worst. So I, I'm actually, this is not the same as some of Jalen's other five turnover games. So I thought, I thought he was uh, really good. Shot 17 of 26, three of four from three. The three of five from the line, you know, obviously you want to see him hit another one or both of those. But, and even though it was only two assists, I'm telling you, he, he moved the ball really, really well. What else can I say about Jalen Brown? He started off the season the way he started it off. I was critical. 
and now he's he's a grown, adapted, evolved, however you want to say it, he's figured it out. He's figured it out. This is Jalen Brown. Now, his he had a great pass. He he was hot down the stretch. He had a great pass to Kristaps Porzingis, who hit a three pointer. That felt like it might have been a dagger. That might have been a turning point. I can nitpick and say that the 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 play that he got fouled on, which got reversed, but was a foul. That there was a wide open pass to Derek White. I think in the film session he'll look at that. They'll look at that. Now, he took a shot that he could hit, that little baseline fadeaway. It's not it, – he normally takes that head on, but that's a shot that he stepped He stepped into it. He rose up. He got hit, and he still got the shot off. That should have been a foul. But nitpicking, the right play would have been to pass to Derek White. I think it would have been an amazing story. The written story, the podcast, if Jalen had scored 40 points and his third assist, which would have been misleading because I think he had many more plays where he got the hockey assist or potential assists that the shots were missed. But if he had made that pass and Derek White had hit the shot and that's how the Celtics won this game, oh, man, what a great story. That would have been. Unfortunately, because we're in a results-based business, that wasn't there. And the entire story changes, and the entire story is being pissed about a foul call. But he was right there on the cusp of an amazing finish to this game. All that being said, Jalen is just he's playing out of his mind. He's playing the best basketball of his life. And it's it's starting to get to a point where like maybe we we've, we've been waiting for all right when is this going to stop when is is he going to uh revert back or anything like that it's i think we're i'm i'm getting past that i'm getting past that like i'm starting to like i kind of trust that this is the Jalen Brown that we're going to see moving forward and it's it's been a while and it's there's a reason to not trust it because I've seen such a long history of it not being like this, but I do think he's finding the right pass. I think he's, he's making the right play. This is just an evolution of Jalen Brown. And, and I, I believe it to be real. I think it's very real. So I, I, I can't say any more about how great Jalen Brown has been. And he deserved to get that foul call. He deserved to get that and have a chance to go to the line and put this game away. But it's a loss. Uh, Christoph Porzingis was really good in this. Seven assists. I probably should have spent more time talking about Porzingis, but it's unfortunately um, that's the way it goes. When you lose, the storylines change. But if anything, they should have had more Porzingis. 13, 13 shots was not enough. Porzingis... Uh, if I have one complaint about this game, it's it really is that Porzingis didn't get enough shots. The 13 shots, uh, it, it was, um, I mean, I don't know where they would have come from. Al only took five. White and Holiday took 16. Uh, you can argue that maybe Derek White shouldn't have taken 16, but it's only 16 shots. Uh, maybe Maybe the Celtics needed to find a way to get a few more shots. Maybe if they had protected the ball a little bit more, and didn't turn it over 15 times, maybe five of those could have gone to Porzingis and 18 shots would have been a different story. Again, a little nitpicky, but 19 points, five rebounds, seven assists for Por- for Porzingis. Excuse me. He, uh, some of the passes he made, the backdoor cut to Holiday, uh, that, was, that was really great. Uh, a couple of other passes. He's a tremendous passer. They needed to run the offense through him a little bit more. I mean, maybe, maybe the it's hard for me to say this because Jalen dropped 40 and shot 65%. Uh, maybe, maybe a couple of those shots could have gone Porzingis' way and that, that could have helped. I don't know. Uh, however it, it went, somebody, somebody needed to give Porzingis the ball a little bit more. Um, I thought, you know, holiday had a really good game, 21.6 assists, six rebounds. His game's kind of getting forgotten in all of this. 
uh, but he he played pretty well. Derek White, I thought, played well too, just didn't make some shots, four of 16, but he hit some shots late that were important, and he also had six assists. Celtics had 26 assists. That's that's pretty good. Um, they didn't they didn't hit their free throws. They were 20 of 29 from the free throw line, which I mentioned earlier. A, a couple more of those, it would have been a tie game at the very least. Uh, but this is normally a game that the Celtics would win. They, they, when they look, they out rebounded the Pacers. They outshot the, the Pacers, uh, from three. They never lose when they shoot 48%, 48.5%. But the Pacers went on a stretch that third quarter with McConnell, and then they just got like super crazy, stupid hot from three later in the game. And that, that level of confidence, that level of shot making was just too much for Boston to overcome. Again, no Tatum, no Sam Hauser. So that that's meaningful. That's meaningful. Uh, am I overly concerned about this loss? No, because they the third quarter was kind of crappy. They they should have had more energy there. Uh, but they came all the way back and they had a lead in the fourth quarter. So if you're leading in the fourth quarter, uh, that's you can look at that and say, you should probably try to hold on to that lead. Uh, overall, it's just, it's tough. It's tough to lose. It's tough to beat a, a, a team like the Pacers at home. Uh, they, they caught fire in that third and the Celtics didn't match it. And that that's basically where the whole thing fell apart. I am interested in seeing how that last two minute report's going to go. That's going to be a fun one. Uh, I have a sneaking suspicion that the league will find a way to justify that call. Again, I don't think that the, the, that rule was interpreted correctly. I just don't think it was interpreted correctly. And whatever that last two minute report says, I'm sorry. I just, I, I just feel like that's, that's wrong. It's wrong. If you're going to say that you can hit somebody after touching the ball first, it doesn't matter if they control, if the offensive player controls the ball, then great. Then if I'm a defensive player and every time I touch the ball first, I'm throwing an elbow. I'm just following through. I'm going straight across the guy's arms. I'm going, I touch the ball first. Challenge the league. If the league says you touch the ball first and that's it, then every time you touch the ball first, just truck the guy and see, see how that, that rule stands up. You can't do that because it's not true. But either way, tough loss for the Celtics. Tough, tough upcoming stretch too now. Minnesota at home Wednesday, Milwaukee on the road Thursday, Friday off, then Saturday at home, Houston, Ime Udoka back in town. That'll be fun. I will be podcasting after all of it, uh, except Friday. I get to take Friday off. So a uh, 13 podcast and 14 today stretch. This level of podcast, I cannot believe it's free, but it is. You don't have to pay a thing. You don't have to subscribe to anything. Other than this show, this this feed, and you get it for free. Open up your phone, click subscribe, boom, done. Ring the bell on YouTube, boom, done. Be like one of the everydayers who has subscribed and enjoyed these free podcasts five days a week or more, all season long. If you are an everydayer, or if you're just, you know, feeling good, great about the show. I'd love it if you share the podcast. If you love what you're hearing, if you love what you're watching, then share the podcast. Tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.